Namaste. Welcome to model one of my Indian fusion belly dance free webinar. I'm very excited to share with you uh, Indian classical dance nuances that you can apply to Indian fusion belly dance. And so um, we will go right away with a uh, facial expression, facial movements, the eye movements, the neck movements and torso movements. And, uh, and onto that, I will be sharing mudras that I use in my Indian fusion belly dance. And we will practice that all together. And so um, it will be just upper body uh, practice for this first module. And the second module will be a movement in space using all the upper body movements. So we will start putting our hands to the side and we will do torso movements side to side and bringing our neck in the opposite direction. And so in ODC, classical Indian dance, which is the dance style that I've been studying for many years, we work a lot with the law of opposition. And so that means that we isolate our body into different directions to create pathways. And so here I have my torso going to one direction and I have my neck going to one direction and the eyes are going along the neck movement. So my eye gaze is going side to side and I'm kind of drawing a half moon with my eyes and make sure that your eyes are not going way to the side. You want your eyes to be going not even to the corners. You want your eyes to be going like to where my hands are. You want to really shorten the side to side gaze because otherwise going way to the side doesn't really good, look good aesthetically. And so you want to, um, you also want to interact with the people when, when you're performing, you want to interact with the people who are in front of you because those are the ones that are really able to see your eye movements very clearly. So you want to make sure that the side to side peripheral is actually small than bigger. So we're going to do some torso movements. Take a deep breath, inhale and exhale. Ground your energy to this present moment. Bring your heart out, bring your chin down and let's do side to side. And always have that inner smile. The eye movement is, make sure you go to the center with the eye movement. So this are, these are uh, body isolations that I use a lot in my Indian fusion belly dance. Um, obviously in tribal fusion, we do a lot of torso isolation, and, uh, but we never really bring so much of the head and the eye movements together. So in Indian dance, uh, we do in ODC, and so I practice this, uh, these isolations a lot um, so that I can bring them beautifully, not only in my ODC practice, but also in my Indian fusion practice. So make sure to, when you practice at home alone, make sure to start with the eyes. So just go with the eyes side to side then go with the head side to side and go head and eyes together and make sure the eye goes to the center when it goes to the side and then work on the torso and the law of opposition And do a little, small little griba, forward and back. And also in Indian dance, we do a lot side to here. So we go side, side, side. So basically we're going up, so that corner to that corner, that corner to that corner. So don't go very, very high. Make sure that the peripheral is small. 
so that you're interacting with the people in your audience. So this is kind of a shy movement. When you see Krishna playing his flute, going around the forest, and you quickly exchange looks with each other, and you shy your face away. So this is a... This is one movement I love to use in my Indian fusion. These are nuances that you find in Odissi classical dance, which I think are just so transcendental and beautiful, and they really embellish the Indian fusion uh, when you bring it together. So, side, 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 side. And now we're going to talk on mudras. So the first mudra that I'll be sharing with you today, so I just want to... Uh, before I start sharing them with you, uh, just know that the mudras that I um, include in my Indian fusion belly dance are just decorative mudras. They are mudras that donate, uh, that enhance places, things, objects. They have no profound uh, religious sim symbolism, nor do, do they evoke any religious uh, Hindu deity. Um, in a sense, we, all the mudras uh, were born uh, with uh, beautiful through beautiful mythological stories. Um, all of them have a profound Hindu or Buddhist meaning, but the ones that I use in my Indian fusion are just decorative mudras. Uh, mudras to just uh, enhance objects, places or things. So the first mudra that I use a lot in my uh, Indian fusion is the Pataka mudra, which is the half flag mudra so this is how you perform it just hands together fingers all touching each other and this is the pataka mudra now i want to share with you a beautiful book that i carry with me all the time called mudras of india written by revital and kane karol they are a beautiful couple she is also a wonderful odissi dancer and they together wrote a great bible on yoga and dance mudras so this uh, uh, book uh, gives a thorough introduction to the mudras of India and also give great reference to the mythological meaning and also to the Shastric texts from where these mudras can be found also. So I'm going to look up Pataka Mudra and give you the uh, meaning according to the Bible of mudras. So the, uh, so the other name given to Pataka Mudra is Dvaja Mudra. And this is the name that you will find in, uh, in the Nacha Shastra and the Abhinaya Chandrika. So this hand, hand gesture is the most versatile of all dance mudras and has many meanings and usages. According to mythology, it origin, originated when Brahma, the creator, went to Parabrahma, the supreme being, to salute him with his hand held like a flag, symbolizing victory. Since then, it has been called the flag hand. The associated sage is Shiva, race is Brahmana, color is white, the patron deity is Prama Brahma. It is very similar to the Abhaya Mudra used in Buddhism and in yoga tradition. So this Pataka Mudra, I use a lot, especially when I do travel uh, or just when I uh, get into sculpturesque poses in my Indian fusion dance. So I will show you something that we can do uh, just with our upper body using the Pataka Mudra. So from here, you shift your body to the left, so you shift your torso to the right, or you can mirror me, shift it to the left, or I will mirror you. So shift it to the right, your neck is to facing uh, the left and your eyes are also facing the left. And you will open it up, one, two, up and down. Let's do that again. Look at my eyes, one, two, up, and down. 
So this is one beautiful movement that I use in my Indian fusion uh, stylization. Uh, another one could be just using half of it. So imagine your uh, hand is here and you drop it into Allah Padma. So let's do, imagine you here, you bring it, you, and rem remember that I always follows the hands. So a second way to use the Ala Padma, let's do that side. As you see, there are a lot of subtle movements happening here. My torso is going to one side, and as my torso goes to one side, my head is also moving, traveling with it. And let's, uh, another one that we use a lot, this comes from Katak. Uh, so I've studied Katak, I've not done a thorough, thorough training of Katak, but I've taken quite a lot of classes and uh, I do bring Katak dance into my Indian fusion um, and so I will just teach you a, um, a few things that a few movements that I use in my Indian fusion so using the Pataka Mudra so we go over the shoulder and back to the heart open and up and back to the heart we bring it to the waist waist in open over the shoulders and back shoulders so we're kind of doing figure eights let's do that one again figure eight here and here so this is all using pataka mudra and we can all just use one at a time down down and up down up down so these are a few movements that you can use with kataka mukha mudra the next one is mayura mudra and from pataka you bring the ring finger and the thumb finger together and this is Pataka Mudra and this is the Peacock Mudra. It is also called the Vajra Pataka Mudra and that is that means the thunderbolt of Indra. So I use the so in Indian dance we use this to denote Shiva's you know peacock feather that he uses on his uh, on his hair hat. We also use it as speaking in Indian dance or just enhancing a beautiful say, saying. So I use it in my Indian fusion. I use this one a lot. Just, you know, so from this, just enhancing some beautiful movement. And remember that to perform the Pataka Mudra as I was doing, the movement comes from the hand, from the wrist. So the Pataka Mudra doesn't move and you just move from the wrist up. So let's go down down and you look at your mudra coming up. Let's do the other side. And rest, 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 rest. Mayura mudra, the peacock mudra. And now we're going to do the hamsasya mudra, which is one of my most favorite mudras to use in Indian fusion. So this is the swan mudra. It is depicting a swan. So we use this a lot when we want to, in Indian dance, to put a flower necklace, a necklace around us. It could be a flower garland or just a necklace. Or putting flowers around our hair bun. Or putting earrings on. Or um, picking flowers many ways to use the Hamsasya Mudra. I will be reading from the Bible of Mudras what the Hamsasya Mudra, its mythological meaning. 
or one could say it's mythological story. According to mythology, this mudra is derived from Dakshina Murti when he was explaining the intricacies of the Tattva system. Its race is Brahman and its patron deity is Brahma. So Hamsasya, I use it a lot, especially to do big movements. So when I go like that, especially when I'm turning, I'll do Hamsasya or when I uh, am depicting Especially I, when I choose the songs for my Indian fusion choreographies, I always choose songs that have lyr uh, lyrics to it and mostly Indian lyrics, which are storytelling something really beautiful or something that I want to express in that moment. So I will use this a lot to just depict, depict a person or depict a place or, you know, depict my heart. Um, just, you know, to enhance a movement. So, you know, I will use this a lot like that. So as I said today, I'm just going to be working on upper body movements, just simple, simple gestures that we can use uh, in Indian fusion belly dance. Um, I also use this one a lot. I'll put my Pataka Mudra when I want to express myself. So like, please listen to me, you know, I do it to the side. I like to speak with the audience, but I use this one a lot. Like, please listen to me or mm, this tastes so good. Or I eat a chocolate and mm, it tastes so good. So I will also, you know, use this when I am expressing Abhinaya in my Indian fusion. So everyone, this is Hamsasya Mudra, it's the Swan Mudra and I use it to decorate things. The next Mudra I use is the Kataka Mukha Mudra. So I use this one a lot with the Alapadma Mudra movement. So Alapadma is the half lotus and I'll go to the explanation of that one after this one. So Kataka Mudra Mudra is the Pataka Mudra. Bring the index finger and the middle finger together and the thumb goes underneath. This is Kataka Mudra Mudra and I'll be reading from the Bible its meaning, its mythological meaning. According to mythology, this mudra originated from Guha when he practiced archery in front of Shiva. The associated sage is Bhargava. Race is Deva, color is gold, and the patron deity is Ragu Rama. So I use this mudra, as I said, um, when I do Alapadma. So that's the one that's going to come up next. Alapadma is the half lotus mudra. And so this is a very good lotus mudra. This is a very wonderful mudra to practice because it activates all the five elements in the body. And um, the, the name that you will, this, the, the Alapadma name is the name given by the Orion, uh, by the Oriens from Orissa. But the Shastric name, uh, the name that you will find in the Natra Shastra is Ala Pallava. So this is Ala Pallava in the Natya Shastra and Ala Padma in the Orian uh, Shastric text on Odissi dance. So I use this a lot. Kataka Mukha Mudra and uh, Ala Padma, we use it a lot in Indian Odissi dance. So open to Kataka Mudra Mudra, open to Kataka Mudra Mudra. Ala Padma, Kataka Mukha 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 Mudra. Ala Padma. Padma. 
A lapadma katakamuka tupataka. A lapadma katakamuka mudra tupataka. So we can use this in our fusion dance. And remember the eyes always follow the hands. There you go. Kataka Mukha Mudra to Alapadma. Inner rotation of the hands out and in. And you can do it reverse. This can also be expressing springtime, Vasanta. So you'll find it a lot in the Abhinayas, the dance, the dances in Odissi that are depicting a springtime. So like walking through the forest, how beautiful it is to be in a place full of flowers and wonderful nature. Yeah. So we can use it a lot in our Indian fusion too. It's very embellishing. The next one is Katakari Mukha uh, Mudra. So Katari Mukha Mudra is bring the last two fingers together. And this is Katari Mukha Mudra. And this you can put it over one eye, open it up and look to the side. So close one eye, open it up, look to the side. Together. Katari Mukha Mudra. Or together. Can you see it? And now I'll be sharing. In Indian dance, we use it a lot. The lotus blossoming. So let's imagine that I'm blossoming from the lotus flower. My consciousness awakens like the lotus flower. Don't open it too much. That is not how you perform it. It's a small little opening. It has to be the size of your eyes. The size, can you see here? That's how it must be. Katari Mukha Mudra. According to mythology, this mudra originated from Shiva when he set out to slay the demon Jatadhara. According to legend, he fixed his middle finger in the center of the earth and drew a circle around the circumference of the earth with his index finger. And this is how Kartari Mukha Mudra was created. So I will repeat that. According to legend, Shiva fixed his middle finger in the center of the earth and drew a circle around the circumference of the earth with his index finger. As you see, and this is how Katari Mukha Mudra was created. The associated sage is Prajanya, Praj, Prajanya, the rain god. Race is Kshatriya, Kshat, Kshat, color is copper and the patron deity is Vishnu. So that's Katari Mukha for you. So I'll use it a lot in dances where I'm expressing myself or just want to embellish. As I said, the Indian fusion uh, that I, uh, the musicality that I use a lot normally is music that has lyrics and that has meaning. So that's why I will bring um, these mudras that can enhance the meaning of the music. Uh, the Padma Mudra is the full-blown bloom lotus mudra. So this is how you perform it together, hands pretty curled like that, 
and that is the full bloom mudra, the Padma mudra, lotus mudra. And I'll be reading to you from the book what it means. It is found in yoga Tattva Mudra Vijnana form and is one of the 32 traditional Gayatri Mudras, specifically the sixth gesture in the subset of eight mudras practiced after meditation or recitation of the Gayatri Mantra. So I use this a lot when I want to, you know, evoke heart presence in my dance. And also because it's what I've learned in Indian dance, we always bring the, the hand to the heart. We do the wrist turn and we open it up. So I think this is something really beautiful that you can bring in your Indian fusion whenever you want to enhance the symbol of flower in your dance. And so the way we practice this is hands down, two, three, I'll do that one more time. One, two, three, four. That's the Ala Padma. No, that's the Padma Mudra. Sorry. So I use this a lot also in my dance. The next one is Upadana Mudra, and it's just depicting feminine grace. And I'm sure you see this a lot in uh, Indian dances, semi classical Bollywood dances. So you'll see this one a lot in ODC. Upadana Mudra, which you just put the two Pataka Mudras, one on top of each other. And this is how you use it. So make sure you look into the side. You can do some fun movements. You can also depicting it as your as a dupatta, as a scarf that you wear over your head, and you're trying to hide yourself, or you open, hide. So this is the Upadana Mudra, and it's just depicting feminine grace. And so this is what I have to share with you today on nuances on Indian classical dance that can be used in Indian fusion belly dance. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, send me a direct message to either my Facebook page or my uh, Instagram account. I'm here to support you in whatever you need and uh, you can also log on to my webpage tata-dancefromtheheart.com and sign up for my newsletter and keep up to date with all the new things that I'll be uh, offering hopefully by the end of the year and uh, I hope, I pray for you, I pray for your health, I pray for your family, I hope uh, uh, that this time now can serve us in reflecting and how we can be of most benefit to ourselves and the planet and um, to the present moment so keep strong in your practice and the next video on Indian fusion techniques first model dedicated to classical Indian dance um, will be techniques that we can use which I will uh, uh, share with you all the sculpturesque poses that we use in Indian dance and also uh, body movements, you know, um, uh, let's say, pa you know, movement pathways that I've learned in Katak that um, we can use in Indian fusion. So the next class coming tomorrow will be um, movement pass, uh, pathways and sculpturesque poses coming from Indian classical dance that you can use in Indian fusion. So stay tuned and thank you so much for being here today. All my love and devotion to you.